Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, tonight's project is filling the cooling system on the Corvette, the LS1. Um, I know filling the cooling system doesn't sound like that exciting of a video. Uh, however, I'm actually really excited to bring you this video uh, for two reasons. One, if we're at the point that we're putting fluids back in the car, that means we're almost done with the engine build. And I can't tell you how exciting I am. It's been almost a year and a half. Uh, in this rebuild process, a lot of things happen, uh, some distractions and slowdowns, but we're getting very close to hitting the key on the car, so adding the coolant is one of the final steps, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, reason number two I'm excited about this video is I have a new tool. And if you know me, I love new tools, um, so I'm excited to try this one out. I haven't used it yet, um, just playing around with it a little bit, looking through the kit, uh, but tonight's going to be the first time. Uh, that I use this to put coolant into the car, so uh, we'll do that together. <clears throat> so this tool um, is from FJC, uh, part number 43610, but it's a vacuum cooling refill kit. Uh, so the way this system works is it <clears throat> excuse me, pulls a vacuum on your cooling system. So you have to drain all the coolant out. Uh, so in case of my car, uh, it's a fresh engine build, so the system's completely empty uh, anyway. Uh, if you were working on this in your garage, uh, you'd pull the drain plug out of the uh, the radiator, drain all the coolant out uh, that way. Uh, this system does not pull coolant out of the car. Uh, it's only used for filling. So once all the coolant's out, uh, we hook this up, and this is going to pull vacuum on the cooling system. So it pulls all of the air out of the system. Uh, so think of it very similar to what you... Uh, you would pull a vacuum on your air conditioning system uh, before you put, um, well, it's not Freon anymore, it's R134A, but before you charged your um, AC system, you pull a vacuum on it to get all the uh, oxygen out of the system. <clears throat> well, same thing uh, when you fill your cooling system, uh, ending up with an air pocket trapped somewhere in a cylinder head or, or somewhere else can cause overheating problems. So uh, if we can pull all the air out of the system, then when we refill it, we know we don't have any trapped air pockets. So that's what this tool does. It's actually very simple. Um, so a quick rundown. So this end uh, fits into your uh, coolant reservoir because obviously the Corvettes don't have a, a traditional radiator cap. But if you're working on a, a car or truck that had a uh, radiator cap, then that's where this would go. <clears throat> so the Corvette is the uh, coolant overflow tank or sometimes called the expansion tank. Uh, and it fits down uh, in there. I'll go ahead and mention, so if you look down inside the uh, coolant reservoir tank uh, on the Corvettes, there's webbing in there. And it was actually too long. I don't know if you can kind of get a sense for how long um, this rubber piece was. But to get it down deep enough that it sealed up here, um, it was hitting the webbing at the bottom. So uh, right out of the gate, I had to uh, modify the tool uh, a little bit. But this is just a, uh, a rubber uh, fitting so I cut uh, maybe an inch or a little bit better off of it um, so that this didn't bottom out and I could get a good seal uh, on the rubber coupler so this tube uh, goes into here and it has a valve so this end uh, would go down into your bucket of coolant you could run it into um, one of the jugs or as I'm going to do I'm going to mix it up because I'm using a, a concentrate um, I'm going to do a 50-50 mix with distilled water, um, just in a, uh, like a, a bucket. But anyway, that, this end goes down in the bucket, this end, uh, connects to the tool, and then there's a, a valve, open, uh, and closed. This end, this goes to shop air, so you'll need an air compressor to run it. Um, though I'm just running it off a, a little air, uh, like pancake air compressor like you'd run a nail gun or something like that off of uh, and I've already pulled vacuum one time just playing with it um, that's really all the compressor you need you don't need a giant compressor uh, to run this tool uh, so your shop air line uh, connects here uh, and then this is an outlet uh, end and you could connect if you didn't want the air blowing down wherever it's at um, they give you a little piece of hose here uh, you could redirect the air uh, if you wanted and then there's a open and close valve here so when you uh, connect your shop air it begins uh, so you would hook this up and have this closed initially right 
then when you hook up your shop air, it begins pulling a vacuum as long as you have uh, this valve open. So it's pulling vacuum because it's bringing shop air through here and that sucks air out. So you're pulling a vacuum. Once it gets to uh, 20 inches of vacuum, you'll close this valve and then you can disconnect your shop air. And then we'll watch it um, for a few minutes and you want to make sure it holds that vacuum. Uh, if it begins dropping very quickly, that means somewhere uh, you've got a leak and it's sucking air in, which means coolant could get out. Uh, so we'll watch it for a few minutes just to make sure we hold appropriate vacuum. Then at that point, right, we've already got this line hooked up. This end will be in a bucket of coolant. When we open this valve, it will begin sucking coolant in and it will refill uh, the system. So very simple. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, so I'll hook it up to the car and I'll let you see. Um, I was really surprised how quickly it pulls down a vacuum in the system. Uh, it does it really quickly, so I was kind of impressed. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, so we're over here at the car. So here's the coolant uh, reservoir tank. Uh, here's our uh, rubber fitting coupler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it just seats down uh, in there. And then once it starts pulling vacuum, it actually sucks itself down so you don't have to hold it in place uh, once it gets started. Uh, like I said, this is the line that will go to our bucket of coolant. Um, so obviously I've got a Corvette, so I'm running Dexcool. Uh, so that's a gallon of Dexcool concentrate and then added a gallon of distilled water. Uh, and I also added <clears throat> a bottle of um, Redline's water wetter uh, just to make the uh, coolant a little bit more efficient. Uh, helps break the surface tension um, and it makes it cool just a little bit better. Um, obviously, two gallons is not going to be a, enough, <clears throat> but I can mix up a little bit more in the bucket uh, as we get to that point. So for hooking this up, uh, here's our, our line from the uh, compressor. Uh, it will connect here. <clears throat> Before we plug that in, we'll open this valve because we want it to start pulling vacuum and then make sure this line is closed. If you had this open, then it would just try to suck uh, coolant um, through. So you wouldn't actually pull a vacuum on the system. So uh, this valve closed, this one open. Uh, and I apologize for the noise because the compressor is gonna kick on uh, here in a second. Okay, uh, and that quickly, it pulls um, 20 inches of vacuum on the system. So I just wanted you to see, um, right, what 20 inches of vacuum does. It collapses the radiator hoses uh, and everything, right? It really pulls uh, vacuum down on the system. It's pretty impressive. Um, and then if you can see this. Not sure how well that focuses, but that's uh, 20 inches of vacuum. And you can see it's holding that. Uh, we'll give it just a second, make sure it stays there. Um, and then we'll turn this valve, which will start pulling in coolant from our bucket of coolant. Okay, here we go. So we held vacuum uh, without losing any vacuum uh, for several minutes now. So now we're ready to uh, open this valve, which will start pulling coolant uh, into the cooling system. And of course, there shouldn't be any leaks, but be watchful if you see coolant leaking out anywhere. 
that's bad. And honestly, it's crazy how fast it's pulling uh, the coolant in. Uh, it's almost done, almost two gallons already. All right, so we're gonna pause that there for a second. Get the valve closed. Uh, I need to put some more coolant in the bucket before we run dry. Okay, so I put some more coolant in my bucket so that we don't run it dry. Open the valve again. Okay, and we're at the end of our vacuum. <clears throat> they do provide instructions that uh, if the vacuum pulled on the system doesn't pull enough coolant back in to completely refill it, which um, we gotta be pretty close, um, you can pull vacuum on it one last time and that will help pull in uh, whatever else you need. So looks like I may need to do that. Close that off there. Um, I'm going to take this out and take a look and see uh, if we need any more. Okay, I'm going to hook the shop air up again. I actually got both valves closed at the moment. I'll open this uh, just a second once I get it attached. Okay. Uh, I did put a towel under the outlet over here. Uh, I guess <clears throat> that would be the benefit of using the extra hose that they gave you. But once there's a little bit of coolant in the system, um, you can end up spraying out a little bit of uh, coolant mist on the uh, discharge when you pull vacuum again. Okay, so we'll open the valve again. So this is closed. And I'm going to monitor this because we're getting close to being at the right fill level, so I don't want to overfill it either. All right, so that should be uh, pretty much full. So I'm going to disconnect things and uh, we'll take a look. Okay, so that's how the uh, vacuum fill uh, for the cooling system works. Uh, seemed to be pretty straightforward. I was really surprised how quickly uh, it pulled a vacuum on the system, uh, collapsed the radiator hoses and that sort of thing. Um, and then when you switch the valve to pull uh, coolant in, uh, it really moved a lot of coolant very quickly. So. Uh, seemed to work pretty well. Um, I did have to draw vacuum on it a second time uh, to have enough vacuum to um, completely fill the, the reservoir. A little bit of a, an annoyance, but didn't seem to be uh, that big of a deal. So, um, <clears throat> and then of course you can always top it off uh, to get it exactly where you want it. Um, I'll watch this over the next uh, few drives. Obviously I haven't fired up the motor yet, uh, but I'll watch it <clears throat> once I get a chance to drive it a little bit. Um, and see if the coolant level uh, works its way down, uh, which would be an indication there was an air pocket somewhere uh, that worked its way out. Um, of course, there could be you know, an air pocket in the heater core or something like that. Um, that would have to circul circulate itself out. But overall, uh, I seem, think I'm pretty happy with the kit. Uh, it seemed to be pretty easy to use. So uh, hopefully it's something that works for you. Uh, if you've used it before, uh, let me know how uh, it worked out for you or other people you know, in the comments. Uh, if you get any questions about it, uh, hit me up. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. Um, as always, uh, please like and subscribe to videos. Uh, YouTube is kind of a Nazi about how many people like and subscribe to your videos these days. So uh, I hate to beg for that sort of thing, but uh, I really do appreciate it. So I uh, hope this helps, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.